Hi everyone, it's Bren here and welcome to the very last garden update of autumn 2020. When I see you next week, I just cannot believe it, but it's going to be winter time. And this week, my children went back to school here in New South Wales, Australia, which meant I had a lot more spare time to spend outside here. And boy, did I make the most of it. I put in a heap more seedlings. So please just sit back and relax for a few minutes and I'll show you what I've been up to. Beside the raised garden beds, there's this big patch of annual flowers, bright lights cosmos, marigolds, and the strawberry fields globe amaranth. Despite it not looking its best anymore, I'm leaving these plants in here for a little bit longer because they are still providing food for our little garden friends. And I'm not quite ready to clear out this section yet because I've been busy putting more plants in elsewhere. Let me show you a few of the places. A lot more plants went into this part of the garden. I never quite know what to call this area. If you have any suggestions, just let me know. I'm trying to think of a good name for it. I finished planting up this bed around the corner from the archway. There are only these purple potted pea seedlings growing along the fence line. But this week I added some more compost here and I planted in a mixture of flowers and edibles. All along the border I have this wild rocket. There's quite a few of these plants in here and I still have half a tray um, I sold about 50 of them so I have quite a few now to put around the garden and Wild Rocket is a really fantastic um, edible plant that is super drought hardy and it puts out these beautiful flowers as well. So that's my kind of plan for this. I'll harvest from it and then come summertime I should have a whole border of little yellow flowers. I've also put in this rainbow chard, some stock, also some corn cockles in this patch, tricolor salvia. Over here I've got the bunny tail grass up against the fence. There's dill, a few of the foxgloves and that's probably all I'm going to be able to squeeze into here. I cannot wait to see what it looks like. And yes, I know you might be asking yourself, how am I going to get in there to harvest those peas? And you know what? I'm not worrying about that at the moment because I wanted to make the most of this bed. I might end up putting a couple of pavers in there in amongst um, the plants to access the peas. And also I know that's not great compacting the soil, but it's just the way it worked out and I'm pleased with it anyway. <laughs> And over here beside that garden bed, I added in this extra section where I put in some calendula seedlings. They have placed them fairly close together, but what I'm going to do is once they get a bit bigger, I'll thin them out. I'll remove some of these and transfer them elsewhere in the garden, which will mean that the plants that remain will have plenty of room to grow to their full potential. I could have potted up some of these rather than putting them in the ground, but I was just trying to save myself a bit of time. And this way for me works really well as well. I'm over here by a little patch of calendulas just to show you what they look like. These flowers can be harvested and you can make calendula cream with them. And it's meant to be really good for people who have sensitive skin. A quick update on how the plants are doing in this old fire pit which looks like it was once a barrel that has been cut in half. The Elysiums are filling out nicely. I have a few flowers on the Johnny Jump Violas. I had to replace this lettuce seedling because it was eaten by probably slugs or snails. Story of my life in this garden. And I just noticed that this lettuce seedling in here is pretty much gone. It's just a bit of a stump left. The other few plants are looking good here. In this corner, I did have a lacy facilia, but that died on me. But it worked out well because one of my friends gave me a whole load of these plants this week. So I decided instead of replacing the lacy facilia with one of the same, I popped this plant here in, in its place. Here's another big garden bed that I planted out. 
it's absolutely packed with seedlings. I'll quickly go through them now. Along the back there's foxgloves. In this section here there's broad beans. I put some of the giant stock in there. The lacy facilias over here. Some rainbow chard. Um, kohlrabi. Um, some Asian lettuce. And elysium along the front. And a couple of cinerarias here for a bit of silver foliage. With all the broad beans, I put them in a grid formation. So I think there's like four across and five down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some stakes in there because as they grow up and get taller, they need support. I have to admit that I impulse purchase these broad bean seedlings. Broad beans are definitely an edible that are super easy to grow from seed. However, I think I've left it a bit late now to be sowing them. So when I saw the opportunity to purchase these I just kind of went for it I didn't think about it too much and now I've got like 20 of them my goal with these is to get a decent harvest this springtime if you remember last year when I grew these they got absolutely attacked by aphids and I did not get one broad bean off them so I'm really hoping this year I have much better success the camellia tree over here is starting to flower I'll be cutting back this Anthony Parker salvia soon. It takes up quite a bit of room and it's a herbaceous perennial so I can cut it right back to the ground. It will free up this space here and I usually every year put in foxgloves. In the same garden bed I noticed that this Australian native Godinia ovata is flowering. It's probably one of the first Australian natives that I fell in love with. As I mentioned previously, we're so fortunate to have a local community nursery run by the council and they propagate a lot of native plants to our area and give them away to households for free. I've got a few of these spider plants around the garden. I just love them with their variegated leaves and they're great at propagating. They put out these runners. It's quite similar to um, strawberries, I guess and I'll be able to put these into pots and I'll have a few free plants that I can pop around the garden in springtime. In this big pot here about three weeks ago I popped in some garlic cloves and they've started to put up shoots. Here is my little container garden. The bok choy is filling out nicely. I've got some leeks in here, some mixed lettuce, I've started to do little harvests from this container. These are spring onions. I had a little patch here where nothing was growing for me so I popped in this stock. And same situation with this container. Um, I had some um, carrots in here. Oh, it's just really bad germination. I re it a couple of times and I've decided to leave that as is and I added in some stock seedlings in its place. Here are some pickling onions and then over here are my little um, baby beets. I shared a little cool fact about beetroot seeds this week on my TikTok account. So did you know when you buy beetroot seeds, each of these isn't just one seed, it's actually a cluster of seeds. And that's why you might notice that more than one seedling will pop up. So what I'll be doing here is I'll be thinning these out to give each of them the best chance to grow to their full potential. Oh, look at this. Autumn leaves everywhere. It's covering all my little babies. And finally, I want to show you this garden bed that has carrot seedlings. The germination in here has been much better. In this bed, I sowed my carrots in two different ways. I know it's really hard to see the seedlings, but I really want to tell you what I've done. So in this section, this half of the garden bed, I mixed the carrot seeds up with some sand and sprinkled them on top. When I sow seeds with this method, I find that they are spaced out for you already from the beginning. And over on the other side of the bed, I just pretty much sprinkle the seeds directly on top and you can see that they're much closer together and I'll have to come in here and thin them out. To me it isn't any trouble at all but I just wanted to show you how that technique of adding sand with your seeds works really well with the spacing. 
Oh guys, I was about to wrap up and look at this. It's Snowflake. <laughs> she has escaped. <laughs> you are so cheeky. I told you she's the rebel out of the group. I kind of really love it though. I better go and try and catch this cheeky little chuck <laughs> before she digs up all my seedlings. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you all again next Friday.